Thank you, Wayne. Did you know that three out of four firefighters say they've experienced stress on the job that's left lingering emotional issues? That's what a new national survey shows that was done by the firefighters union. They say that stress leads to anger issues, relationship problems, even thoughts of suicide. In Syracuse, the most stress-filled firefight in years came in the deadly Fitch Street fire early last month. For the first time, we hear from several of the firefighters who were on the scene that night. They reveal the intensity of the effort to save lives in the challenge of moving past a firefight they'll never forget. Report a structure fire. Where there's so many trapped on the second floor, unable to breathe, 253 Fitch Street. From the first call, the firefighters of Station 1 knew this one was different. Sheer determination on everybody's face. It was, we knew we had people in there, and like I said earlier, we're going to do what we got to do to get them out. A fire with a head start, people trapped. Possibly a baby involved. What was the, what was the information you're getting about people in the house? It appears we have the bulk of the fire. Any sign of the structure is not. Visibility. The dispatch was still saying they were in contact with people on the second floor. Casual portable operation. Victim second floor. Copy second floor victim as you want. Uh, what side are you on? Everybody was trying to make a push, find stairs. Guys were throwing ground ladders to the second floor windows. One victim out in the front yard. Operations copy. One victim out in the front yard. One victim out. Three more to go. We're trained to search without using our sight, you know, by listening, and uh, that's what we do. We, uh, we're, we're depending on our training, absolutely, um, and that's what really gets us through a lot of it, is that training that we do. Smoke so thick they could not see. Fire so intense it lit up a city block. Each of these firefighters from Station 1 had different life-saving duties that night. Their adrenaline surged. Training and experience kept them focused. Most people don't go into burning buildings. You do. Uh, do you keep your, does your heart rate elevate or are you able to keep yourself under control? I mean, it, it's it, controlled chaos. I mean, <laughs> you definitely got to keep yourself in check because if not, you're going to get killed. Yeah. Plain and simple. If I, they no longer hear the baby or the victim on the phone, just an open line. 30 minutes into the call, they were still working to get all the victims out, including a baby, not yet one year old plus two teens and their mother. There's a child and a young teenager, teenagers. How's that weigh on you? I mean, it affects everybody a, a different way, but you can't, um, you can't let it beat you up because the next call might be the same exact thing. And if you're thinking about the previous call, again, your head's not in the game. I'm on the ladder with the victim, it's a baby. Got me second floor with a victim. They rescued four lifeless bodies, rushed them to the hospital, none survived. Any call with a kid is a tough call. Right. Anyone that says otherwise, I don't believe them. Right. Um, and it's just how you deal with it. You know, you're getting, for training to get ready, ready for the call, and then after the call, being smart enough to know you need to deal with it. But yeah, when, when you have family and stuff, it's, there's no way that it doesn't you know, come back on you a little bit. Each of these firefighters has at least a dozen years on the job. After the fire, they talk to each other. They had a formal debrief. They went right back to work. When's the next time you talk about it? Or how do, how do, you, how do you know? I think we'd be lying if we said we don't think about it. And if right. we don't still think about certain calls that we've been on. But again, you have to keep it in check. A national survey of firefighters shows three out of four feel they have behavioral health problems because of post-traumatic stress. Nearly nine out of ten say stigma is a barrier to seeking professional help. We're able to read if someone's having a bad day or something's becoming a, a little more too impactful, you know, and we just pull that person to the side, and, you know, and you, you would talk to them like you would any loved one, you know, to help them through a situation. We have different programs throughout the department to aid and assist with firefighters who may be uh, overwhelmed with stress or the work that we do. Is it okay it to take advantage of those programs? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we're all not, encouraged. Not frowned upon. No, no, it's actually okay. encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, because the better we are, the better and more effective we can be to help those in need. The next call comes quickly. Each member of the Syracuse Fire Department counts on the next to be ready to execute his or her job. The bell hits, we're, we're gone. Just as they did on Fitch Street at a fire they will never forget. Engine three is on scene, heavy fire on the first floor, signal 99.
I talked with Syracuse Fire Chief Michael Mons about the care of firefighters after critical incidents like this. He said the department is working to take care of their own and make sure they do take advantage of counseling and support that they have available.